Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna. So we're reading from uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. This uh, is uh, chapter 2, text 57. Uh, this is uh, this, cha this chapter entitled Contents of the Gita Summarized. Am Taos, it's Odeba, Gita's Bhagavad Gita's Moklashinat. Will they be able to recite it in re in reply, or shall I just do it? Pardon? Shall I just re recite the verse? Yes, sure. Because they don't have it on screen, do they? Um, no, I will read afterwards the the, screen, the translation and the purport, if you will. Okay. Fifty-seven, you said, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yaha Yaha Sarva Sarva Sarvatra Anabishnehas Sarvatra Anabishnehas Yak Sarvatra Anabishnehas Yak Sarvatra Anabishnehas Tat Tat Prapya Shuba Shubam Tata prapya shuham shuham Nabinandati natveshti Nabinandati natveshti Tasya pragya pratishtita Tasya pragya pratishtita Yaksarvachana vishnehas Yaksarvachana vishnehas Tata prapya shuba shubam. Tata prapya shuba shubam. Nabhyandati nadveshti. Nabhyandati nadveshti. Asya pragya pratishtita. Asya pragya pratishtita. Yaksavatrana vishnehas. Yaksavatrana vishnehas. Tata Pratya Shuba Shubam Tata Pratya Shuba Shubam Nabhinandati Nadveshti Nabhinandati Nadveshti Asya Pratya Pratishtita Asya Pratya Pratishtita Yaha Yaha One who Isvis Sarvatra. Sarvatra. Well done. Anabishneha. Anabishneha. Mujatu Lobis got it. They should repeat it as well. Mujatu Lobis got it. Rats. 
Ashuva. Ashuva. Subi. Pragya. Pragya. Perfect knowledge. Ah, through opinitsodna. Pratishtita. Pratishtita. Gantitsebu. Translation. In the material, in the, you, in the material world, one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may attain, neither praising it or despising it, Vince Arts Akhet Samastar, Arts Zoo. Is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. Is Aradar is done to Kodbuli, so open Kodnash. You want to read the purport? I will read the purport. Okay. Okay. Asna Ganmar, Lexis. Material of some horror to all of his guardian should it will be better. Under West Modest, from this at asset in material with its will be better. This visit that our movement that Montaric Argian Sudi can't eat a bully at Krishna Snobby Rebash. Sanam Totali Arteba, material of some Aroshi in Opeba, Muda Mosal of Nelia, Argian Sudi, in either the Santaro or Magobita Arsase. Madam Krishna Snobere Bashi can't eat a book, it on the Bazak, Argida Sudi, Armok Rebets, with neither Mat, I am the reset, followed Krishna, all on him from Opili Absolute. Krishna's asset Snobere Bas, Igi Sru Opil transcendent of Gomario Bande Ahas, Romosat, Samat Hikri, Etodeva. Omegan to Miranda Sia, Gyanan Janan Shalakaya. Shakshurun Militam Jena Tasma Shri Guru Ve Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirvise Kashan Yavadi Pasachari Shatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So thank you everybody for joining us today. We're going to speak uh, from the Bhagavad Gita. This is a, a universal literature. Because he's talking about uh, a universal principle. I say it's speaking about uh, uh, more than universal principle, it's speaking about uh, an eternal principle. Because this universe is sometimes created and sometimes destroyed. But that eternal principle is never destroyed. And that eternal principle is the spiritual principle. Uh, spirit has the exact, exact opposite qualities of, of matter, of material things. So 
Everything in the material world has a beginning, a middle and an end. But the eternal spiritual soul, our, which is our real nature, we actually are eternal. And the whole point of the whole purpose of the Bhagavad Gita is to help us to understand our real spiritual nature. And so this is a, a nice verse. It, basically, it's explaining how we shouldn't become affected by whatever this, this ever uh, situation we're in in this world. Because everything will change in due course of time. Mm -hmm. uh, George Harrison, one of the Beatles, he wrote a, a song called all things must pass. So we have to be prepared for that. You've read the purport. Pardon? We read the purport. Uh, yes, we've read the purport. <laughs> so what does it mean to be unconcerned with happiness and distress? We can't actually uh, create a situation in this world where there is no difficulty. Sometimes things are uh, better than others. That's so it's like being in the ocean. If somebody dropped us in the middle of the ocean, what would we do? You know, the waves are pushing us one way, they're pushing us another way. And we're actually suffering. So what's the, how to solve, how to stop the suffering? If we see an aeroplane come and it comes and lands on the sea and picks us out of the ocean, then our problems are over. But that's very unlikely. So we have to learn to tolerate our situation. And the best way to tolerate is with knowledge. 
ეს კიდე მიღწევადია ყველაზე უკეთესად მიღწევადია ცოდნის მეშვეობით. Otherwise, we, um, so this is called the knowledge is called transcendental knowledge. So that we can raise our consciousness above the ocean. Is Gwechmareba, Trenitz Nobirebis Armagleba Shida, and Dobis Armagleba Shida. Above the ocean, of, above this ocean of material distress. Srila Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavad Gita, our only option is to get out of this material ocean by higher consciousness or transcendental consciousness. Srila Prabhupada. And so, <laughs> he says by not just transcendental consciousness, but by Krishna consciousness. It's one thing to know that we are not this body, but that we're the eternal soul, which is actually operating the body. Um, that may give us some temporary feeling of pleasure, some relief. But if we understand that actually there's an eternal transcendental person who's our ever well-wisher, we, we take shelter of that person, then we can start to become freed from suffering. We can, we can give a material uh, a material example. I think I may mention this last time. One of my friends, he was on a, a boat ride across the ocean. And the, the sea became very, very rough. There was a big storm. And everybody was convinced at some point that the, the boat was going to go under the water and sink. So everybody was in great anxiety and distress. And then uh, my friend, he noticed one little boy, five, six years old, he was very peaceful, he wasn't disturbed. And so eventually the storm subsided and everybody was happy again. This little boy during the storm, he was playing as if nothing had happened, nothing was happening, everything was okay. 
And so my friend went to him after the storm was over and he said, that was a huge storm. We could have actually been killed. He said, you were, you were undisturbed by it. You were very peaceful. He said, why was that? How, how did you manage to keep peaceful? How, how you, did you manage not to be afraid? He said, why should I be afraid? He said, I've got my father here. Pardon, Maharaj? He says, I've got my father here. In other words, he thought, well, if his father's here, he can't come to any harm. Because he had experience before that his father always looked after him. So Krishna is the Supreme Father. Even though we can't see him, we can understand him by hearing about him. In Bhagavad Gita, it explains Krishna's qualities. There's one verse called the Peace Formula. There's Bhaktaram Yagitapasam, Sarvaloka Maheshram, Suridam Sarvabhusnam, Yatma and Shanti Mujtati. That when we, we can understand that Krishna is actually the controller of all creation, all planets. Then we know that we cannot come to any harm unless he sanctions it. Uh, and that is the um, recipient of all our work. Uh, but most of all, then we find some uh, some satisfaction, some relief. But more than that, when we understand that he's our eternal friend, our well-wisher, then this brings peace in all situations. And when from peace comes happiness. So if Bhagavad Gita explains, if we make Krishna the goal of our life, then we'll feel peaceful and happiness will develop from that. Krishna's 
So this process of devotional service or bhakti yoga is meant to develop our faith in the Supreme Personality of God as Krishna. And so we're all in we all have different amounts of faith in the Supreme. And when we come to the point of having full faith, then we're not disturbed in any situation. Just like, the little, just like the little boy, he had full faith in his father. <clears throat> so he says in Bhagavad Gita, um, what's that word? Uh, yes, yeah. Um, let me have a look. There's one nice. There's one nice verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, Shyamalakita, Alilexi. If I can find it. It's called the Fool of Maravipol. Ah, yeah. Yashya Devi Para Bhaktiya Yata Devi Tatagaro Ashyaiti Katita Hita Yanatha Prakashanti Mahatmanaha. He says, Unto those persons who have implicit faith, Supreme Lord and His representative. Then all, everything is revealed, all knowledge is revealed to that person. So what is complete knowledge? That we know that how the atom works. Pardon, Maharaj, I should not hear you. That we have full, that we have scientific knowledge of this material world. Full scientific knowledge. Chwena materialuri sam aros metsniyeruli kodna gavachuna. We're uh, very expert in understanding how to make wealth, how to be, how to develop wealth. Oh, is it something much simpler than that? So real knowledge is, Prabhupada explained, real knowledge means that I am a, an eternal servant of, of, of God, of Krishna. And therefore there's an eternal relationship. And the perfection of life is to engage in that reciprocation. Yeah, so what is... 
So Prema Pumata Mahan, we have an eternal, our goal of life is to obtain love of God. So I was I went on a walk two days ago. Since this uh, COVID-19 situation, I've been in one place for six months. And so every day I go for a walk in the playing fields nearby. Mm -hmm. And this, this day, two days ago, I was walking by. And I walked past this parked car. And I heard this, Hare Krishna. <laughs> and, I looked around and then I saw this person in the car, he, he stuck his head out of the car and he said, Hare Krishna. <laughs> so I went over to him and I started talking. He was from Iran. Iran's not far away from Georgia. <laughs> And so I said, uh, among us were, were talking, he, he made one very, uh, uh, what's the word? He made one very um, interesting comment. Mm -hmm. First of all, I asked him, uh, how does Iran compare to England? He says there's no difference. <laughs> he says they're suffering in Iran and they're suffering in England. <laughs> and that's unusual for most people to speak. Sometimes devotees will say that, but. You never find anybody else saying that in the, in this world. It was a very realized person, actually. And uh, so we were talking a bit longer, and I uh, I invited him to you know uh, come to the temple sometime. I told him, he said that he'd, be, he'd been into Manchester to one temple. Mm -hmm. And I told him that was a Buddhist temple. He says, I tried to speak to them, but I didn't, I didn't really uh, get anything out of it. So I say, this is, this is our founder Acharya's benediction upon us. Uh, he's given us full knowledge. <clears throat> and so with that knowledge, we can actually live in this world, but not be affected by it. We can, we can tolerate because we have a higher purpose in life. 
უფრო მაღალი მიზნები გვაქვს ხოლმებაში, მიზანი უფრო. So, Bhakti Mama began to eat, Yavan Yashas Mitatu at her, Rattato, Mam Tatato, Yabba Vishate, and the long term. So, we may actually understand our nature as being spiritual, but this verse is saying that unless we actually engage our spiritual nature, in a relationship with the Supreme Lord, then it won't satisfy us. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not okay, that's my answer, so that's what I mean. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita says that um, <clears throat> that one who engages in that practice of devotional service is actually the best yogi. The Bhagavad Gita is not a miracle. Uh, Did anybody know they were a yogi? It's a different yogi, yogi bit of the bar. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be able to go home and tell everybody now I'm a yogi. She gives me a test of friends after the door. I walk us down the room, yogi bits and the bit. Just by engaging this process of devotional service. Then we surpass all other processes. Um, Ergun in Sakura with Otsa Shikarqua has Ura, Ella Dana Chani Yogis Zazu from Aralia, no pro Zeda Mazea Alpha, no Mazea Alpha. We consider to be the most intelligent person in the universe. Ah, Ratma, we give it on from Chen, some other ship, Ella Zu pro. You know, whatever little service we can do, then that's very much appreciated. Just like when Lord Ramachandri was building a bridge from uh, India to Ceylon, to Sri Lanka. And uh, Lord Ramachandra's eternal servant, Hanuman, he was carrying huge boulders to make this bridge. And then he noticed one little squirrel. You know what a squirrel is? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, one little squirrel was carrying little pieces of, you know, little pieces of stone and putting them in the ocean. And so Anemon looked at him and as if to say, what good is that? <laughs> <laughs> How will that be the bridge? And at that point, Lord Ramachandra came. And he said, you shouldn't think like that. This squirrel is doing as much service as you are. So, what is service? It's the mood in which it's done. Uh, you know, devotional service means to do things with love. 
Ertuğrul'un sahuru var. Nişanlısın. Sahrasat vakit etti. Sipar vakit. The beginning of that love is to uh, give our time to doing something for Krishna. Uh, there are so many opportunities to serve Krishna. Um, <clears throat> in work people are doing now in the world, it's actually uh, in the beginning it may give a little, little happiness. Little what, Maharaj? Little happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately. It brings distress. Magram sabolo jamshi amasat dagatsa ubedureba moakhome da usiaman anu ubedurebis gan gan tsa. And quite often when we try to do some devotional service, then maybe that may not be so pleasant in the beginning. Zustat aast amgarat ve rodesat chven vitsep tertum sakhorebas. Yet that I agree, wish I am. It may even be like poison. But ever paramane amrita, it becomes in due course of time like nectar, very, very sweet. Just like chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, this is the best service. But, you know, people may not chant it very easily. Just uh, next to Instruction explains that this is due to a disease condition of life. And just like jaundice is, uh, when we have jaundice disease, we feel everything tastes bitter. Mm. But the, the doctors say the cure is to eat sugar. And even the sugar taste is bitter. So if we, if we keep taking sugar, then the sweet taste will return. So if we keep chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, eventually it will become sweet. Um, <clears throat> so it takes practice. And sure, sure enough, if we practice regularly, then we get a taste. Another example is like a young child in the beginning, he can't walk. And he may stand up and then fall down again. But the ability to walk is in the child and eventually he, he can walk. And so similarly, 
pure love for God is in our hearts. It's something we already have. And by practicing devotional service, it awakens. It's not something we have to obtain, we already have it, we just have to uncover it, that's all. So, so should we approach devotional service with the view of I want to be happy? <laughs> is, that very, is that correct? No. <laughs> Don't you want to be happy? No. <laughs> We do want to be happy, but we should not have this attitude, probably, that's what was meant. You mean, you want to be happy, but you shouldn't let anybody know. <laughs> you keep it quiet. <laughs> no, we want to be happy. But the, the formula is, is, we shouldn't try to be happy. Does that make sense? There's one nice verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Sukaya Dukha Makshaya Sankalpa Iyakarminaha Sarap noti haya dukam ani haya sukabritam. So this is saying that sukha, sukha means happiness. Um, uh, and dukha means distress. And so a, a person in the material world desires to increase his happiness and reduces distress. And so he endeavors in that way. It says, however, uh, as soon as we desire to, to be happy, then we, we automatically bring distress. He says, therefore, we should apply this. When we perform devotional service, we should do it in a. We should do it because it's recommended for us in the beginning, not because we we want to immediately become happy. And when we do it like that, as a duty, we actually start to feel happy. And we realize that Krishna is helping us. 
իմ ասած գավի ազրել դա, ուտե բիցով կրիշնա վեխմար է բա ամսազել։ Then our attitude becomes, let me try and please Krishna. Շենտ էր գվերցնեբա բանցորդա, մերը գիչտեբա այսակի բունոգարը, but we have to be um, we have to be patient that's the word patient mm-hmm. and Prabhupada says in the Gita for the sincere practitioner success is assured mm-hmm. In Bhagavad Gita earlier, it says that the one who was born, death is certain. Bhagavad Gita Shabbat Neva Krishna Rom means Ibadeva, Nisu is sickly Garda Uvalia. And after death, birth is certain. Therefore, we shouldn't, we should actually, uh, we have our duty to do and we shouldn't lament. These things will come and go, but we should carry on with our service. In this way, we can control our happiness. Otherwise, we're always getting the opposite reaction. Anyway, no need to mention that. So, um, so Prahlad Maharaj, he says in Srimad Bhagavatam, we should practice this process from the very tender age of childhood. Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam Maharaj is it's so important. And it says if a little, just a little bit of sincere devotional service can give us complete perfection. So every, so every day we have a chance to do some little service. And if we keep doing that, this service will grow and grow until everything becomes service. And then everything, everything becomes happiness as well. So, anything else we do in this world, it won't have the same result. Everything we do turns to misery. You know, we see on the television beautiful film stars. But then, 40 years later, they're no longer beautiful. And therefore, they suffer from, they suffer very much. 
somebody who's very handsome or very beautiful, they've got a lot to lose. But somebody who's not so beautiful, they don't have much to lose, so they don't suffer so much. In fact, when they get older, they may look better. Um, <clears throat> okay, we can stop there. This is uh, so this this class is entitled in we're in pursuit of happiness. So we always remember, don't try to be happy and you'll actually be happy. Even by material qualifications, you know, if you want to be happy, you're going to be disappointed. But if, you do, but if you don't expect much, you don't expect, then you'll, you, you can't be disappointed. But from a spiritual point of view, if we actually try to serve Krishna, then we'll actually feel very satisfied at the end. Because I say Krishna's a source of happiness. And he wants everybody else to become happy. It says in Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> okay, so we can stop there. If you, if, you, if you want to be happy, don't try to be happy. <laughs> Just do, just, do, just do some devotional service with Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we can stop there. Um, is, is, if anybody wants to uh, say anything or ask any questions, you're welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Guru Maharaj, we just uh, you were explaining the work from the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita Maharaj, wasn't it? But in the, in the fourth uh, chapter, Krishna tells Arjuna that uh, uh, whoever um, who will uh, understand why I uh, uh, take the appearance in the material world? He will never uh, uh, get born again. Very bad translation. But that, that's the verse he, the Kapu is referring to. He says what? He says, <laughs> he says if somebody 
he understands the reason why I uh, come to this material world, he will uh, never get bo born again. Uh, if we understand why Krishna comes to this world, we'll never take birth again. Yes, that's yes. true. Yes. Uh, and the, uh, the question is uh, exactly about uh, how, what does that mean to understand the reason of his uh, coming to the material world? Yes, One who understands the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving this body, take birth again in this material world. So it means that, you know, Krishna is not material, he's not of this world, he's from the spiritual world, he's eternal. He's actually situated in his spiritual body. And that he's performing activities to attract the conditioned souls back to the spiritual world. Therefore, if we understand and we follow his advice, we, we can actually also go back, go back to the spiritual world with him. If we understand his position, we'll serve him. And by that service, we'll go back to God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, well, thank you for listening. I'll uh, see you. Thank you, Maharaj, very much. Thank you. It's nice to see Ruslan's arrived. Pardon? It's, nice nice, it's nice to see that Ruslan has arrived. Ah, Ruslan, it's very nice to be here. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Okay, I'll, I'll see you soon, hopefully. It's nice that you've...